everyone. My name is Lovisa Håkansson and uh, uh, I've recorded this uh, key workshop uh, for you since there's quite a big of a time difference between Sweden and, and Australia. So I recorded this uh, key workshop a couple of days ago um, and I hope that you will um, uh, enjoy taking part in it. Although I won't be able to uh, be live together with you and facilitate it. So um, I hope you had a nice um, day yesterday in the Student Voices Symposium's first day. Uh, I looked at the program and it seemed to uh, include a lot of interesting um, sessions regarding this very important and uh, broad topic. Um, so this key workshop I've named, or me and my colleague Ulrike Schnaas and me have named uh, Building Alliances for Democratic Sustainable Futures. And the idea behind this workshop is to, to see whether it's possible to build an alliance or a closer collaboration between um, student voices work, active student participation work and student engagement work that is done in higher education and that it, the work that is done in the field of democratic education and education for sustainable development. Um, I will be the one um, holding this workshop or um, uh, presenting this workshop. Uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Ulrike Schnaas, she's been um, involved in uh, writing the abstract for this and also uh, she has brought, a, brought in a lot of interesting reflections and uh, 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 knowledge uh, to this uh, material, but um, unfortunately she, she couldn't um, uh, record this together with me. So uh, you, you will only have uh, uh, me for, for, this, uh, for this time. Uh, and I hope it will be uh, it uh, uh, will be uh, great. Okay, so uh, a little thing or some things about me, just to give you a bit of a background of uh, uh, me, myself, and I. Um, I'm uh, currently uh, working at the Unit for Academic Teaching and Learning at Uppsala University uh, in Sweden. Uh, Uppsala is the fourth biggest town uh, in Sweden, or fourth biggest city in Sweden, and it's a, a, a student town, many, many would say. Uh, I think the student population in Uppsala is about one-fifth of the whole population. Um, so that's uh, quite a big number. Uh, so during summers, when all the students are, uh, are away or visiting their families or friends and so on on holidays, the, the city is quite empty and very calm. Uh, and apart from working at the Unit for Academic Teaching with the field of active student participation, which is also why uh, uh, I participate in this, um, uh, this symposium, I also study uh, a master's degree in uh, ESD or Education for Sustainable Development. So I'm really interested in uh, pedagogies for uh, for sustainable development, for democratic education, and so on. So that is also um, um, some background to why uh, I've recently come to think that active student participation and this, this, these practices and these fields of work could really um, uh, benefit from joining forces together in higher education. Okay, um, so that was a little bit about me. Uh, and just wanted to also uh, start off with some uh, uh, some pictures that I really like. So um, the first picture to the left here is is a picture of Uppsala in, in the autumn, and it almost looks like this in Sweden and in Uppsala at the moment. Um, the trees are uh, turning orange uh, and yellow. And uh, this is the little um, little river that runs through the city of Uppsala. So this is a little uh, little picture for uh, for you to just to uh, sit, 
to to get you understand or to to for you to see where I'm uh, situated at the moment when I'm recording this also. And um, the picture to the right here is a picture of uh, me with the uh, same uh, <laughs> background as you see the 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 lemons, uh, the wallpaper lemons, and my um, uh, and my child Ruben, who was born in uh, October. 2021. 20, uh, so at the moment I'm on parental leave with him and we're enjoying uh, nature together, playing and he's uh, he's soon about to walk, I think also. So it's a really fun and intensive period at the moment. Uh, so some uh, 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 personal things for you to get to know me a little bit better. And I will hopefully get to know you a little bit better uh, when I read um, um, your discussions and uh, uh, possible questions that appear after this uh, key workshop. So what will happen today during this key workshop um, is that first um, I will briefly go through a little bit of the context and history of active student participation at Uppsala University. The work that has been done uh, here and uh, uh, where it originated from and so on and how active student participa participation is defined uh, in the Uppsala setting um, and this is important uh, an important background to give in in order to also move on to the next topic that will be part of the workshop and that is that ties into the uh, to the title of the workshop uh, as well uh, very much. Uh, so active student participation's potential role in relation to societal sustainable uh, and democratic development and potential alliance building between these theories and practices. Uh, and then we will have an interact interactive finale, I think, uh, and. The reason why I have um, um, structured the workshop in this way is because uh, I think it's easier if you uh, first, uh, since since this is not done live together with you, uh, it's really hard to have like live discussions and so on. Um, me facilitating them and uh, you engaging um, uh, in a in a in a workshopy way during the presentation. So I think it was easier uh, actually to to have the uh, uh, workshop things moved to the end. So you will get time for that uh, in the end to work with that uh, together. And then I will try to um, get back to you in some form, uh, probably in a, in a written format. Uh, and I will I will uh, go, go in and check your discussions probably in the morning after you've had them to see uh, what has come up and if there are any questions regarding the presentation and and what you have thought about uh, the content of this key workshop and also uh, the topic of the key workshop, if it's possible um, to build a kind of alliance between uh, student voices work, active student participation work and education for sustainable development and how these can benefit each other. So I'm really looking forward to to the morning of the uh, of the 29th um, of September, it will be for me when I go through the Padlets that you will be working in. Okay, so this is what we will do today. Um, and just to give you some foundations of the of the workshop first, um, there are different foundations to to it. First, uh, there is the uh, theme of this year's symposium, where on the uh, Student Voices Australia website it says that. This symposium bring together staff and students from uh, Australian higher education institutions to examine the positionality and roles of students as essential partners in decision making and governance now and into the future. So if we, we look then at positionality and roles, part of this uh, key workshop will touch upon uh, the question of what positions and roles are possible for students in higher education, in higher education, um, and um, I will um, 
go through some of the uh, positions and roles that students have had in the Uppsala context. Uh, so those are roles that are uh, possible as an example. Um, also important for this symposium's uh, theme is uh, decision making and, and governance. Uh, and I look at decision making and governance um, when it comes to uh, student voices as being both the way students can influence and be part of decision making and the way the universities and higher education institutions are run uh, uh, in, in the universities and in the higher education uh, contexts themselves. But this is also about students' roles as uh, citizens, I believe, if we extend this further and look at, uh, um, apart from uh, being involved in decision-making and governance at the university, uh, what could be students' roles as, uh, as uh, citizens? And what is it important that you perhaps practice uh, in, in higher education to be able to seriously uh, take on the role as a citizen in a democratic society um, or in other societies as well, of course. Um, when it comes to the now and into the future uh, of uh, the symposium's theme, I think of this as um, what students do during um, their education um, at university or other higher education institutions and uh, how this can contribute to the betterment of higher education and the improvement of uh, the way education is run, but also uh, into the future. So um, the what students bring from, from higher education into uh, their uh, future lives then as uh, citizens or uh, as um, important uh, contributors to uh, sustainable development and the tackling of sustainable development issues and also in developing uh, democracies using different capacities that they develop in higher education um, in uh, development of democracy uh, later on. Also what has inspired this, um, um, this keynote presentation is are issues that are uh, affecting democracy and foundational to, to uh, democracy and the democratic debate in, in many countries at the moment. Uh, so the role of higher education in relation to populism and anti-immigrant discourses. Um, Sweden uh, recently had uh, um, the election for the parliament and the an anti-immigrant party called the Sverige Demokraterna or the Swedish Democrats. Uh, they gained 20% uh, of the vote, votes from, from uh, Swedes. You see here the, the, the leader of the party, Jimmy Åkesson. Uh, and this is a, a commercial uh, or, a, um, or an ad that they have used in the campaign before the election. It says, Sverige uh, ska bli bra igen. And this is a spin-off of um, uh, Donald Trump's um, campaign that he used, Make America Great Again. So Sverige ska bli bra igen is translated, uh, is, the English translation of that is um, Sweden, uh, Sweden has to become better again. And then The Guardian has written ab about the Swedish election and they write that in the wake of the financial crash and the wave of refugees in the mid-2010, this strategy of combining anti-immigrant sentiment with welfare nativism is allowing the radical right to make headway through Europe. So the Guardian writes that progressive politicians and parties need to find a better and more creative response than that of pale imitation of these parties. So progressive politicians and the parties, they have to uh, be more creative uh, when it comes to responding to these discourses. Uh, that have appeared in many, uh, many countries. And we could also ask the questions then, what is the role of higher education here? Uh, what is the role of education in relation to populism and anti-immigrant discourses? 
how should education be run in order to um, to respond to these discourses? Is transmission-based pedagogy or more science-based pedagogy the answer to this? Some say that this is the answer to populist forces uh, and anti-immigrant discourses because this is not uh, this is just you know um, connected to fake news. This is not. Uh, uh, real science. We have to have more real uh, science debates, um, and education should be based on on science. But is this uh, what will help us uh, in uh, combating uh, or um, or try to um, yeah to do something about these discourses? or to, to give another response. How can responsibility for an engagement with these issues be fostered among uh, students? So this could also be seen as a foundation to why, uh, to why this key workshop has been developed and a foundation to, to the discussion on how active student participation and democratic education and uh, ESD education could uh, could, could that be an answer to uh, populism and anti-immigrant discourses, for example? The third foundation uh, I would call the world's wickedness. So the, um, <clears throat> many say that the world is becoming uh, increasingly uh, you know, entangled. We, we, we live in a global world with global flows of, uh, of money, of goods, of uh, uh, of people also, um, and uh, many of the big societal issues today that uh, is up to citizens, uh, politicians, and society uh, at large, and also universities to solve are wicked issues. Um, I th you've probably heard of wicked issues. It's been quite. Um, uh, it's a term that has been quite heavily used uh, the last. The last years, uh, but it refers to problems that are really uh, complex and that there are no real or clear solutions to these problems, and uh, solutions that you that you that you try to use and um, apply to the problems might generate uh, new problems and so on. So uh, scholars are asking and are arguing uh, for um, for um, a change in the way. Uh, pedagogy and higher education is is run, and also uh, what the learning objectives in different courses in higher education should be to prepare students to um, to during their time in higher education and also after higher education deal with these wicked issues. Can we use the same um, pedagogical methods uh, that we've uh, uh, that we're familiar with and have used uh, traditionally, or is it something else that is needed? Okay, so that was that was some things um, on the foundations of this workshop, uh, just to for you to see where I'm coming from, uh, uh, how my thinking has developed around this workshop and where it stems from, basically. Uh, so I think it's important for you to get that context and to get that background in order for you to um, uh, to yeah hopefully better understand why I uh, say the things I say or discuss these things in the way I do. So um, active student participation in Uppsala, a short history about uh, that work first. So the ASP work at Uppsala University uh, it grew out of um, a center that's called CMUS. It's the Center for Environment and Development Studies at Uppsala University. And that center uh, has a long, um, or not a long history, but uh, it started in 1992 uh, with a course that uh, was named Människan and uh, Människan och Naturen. Uh, man and nature uh, translated into English, and it was um, it was on um, upon the initiative of students that this course was started because these students that um, started this course they uh, they thought that 
their education uh, wasn't dealing enough with the pressing issues of uh, society uh, at that time. So it didn't include uh, uh, knowledge and the uh, development of skills to, to deal with wicked issues, one could say. So they thought that their education was lacking quite a bit. So they they uh, uh, talked to the vice chancellor of Uppsala University and also some uh, employees of the university that they trusted uh, and asked uh, how uh, the university could, could improve on this matter. And then the answer from the university was, uh, and this doesn't <laughs> happen very often, so it's fun to, to describe this history, was that why don't you um, start with developing this uh, course, these courses yourselves? You, it seems like you have um, have knowledge about it. You see uh, what is missing. So it seems like you could be really uh, um, great um, course creators here. Uh, and so they they did. Uh, they started developing um, the first course at uh, CMUS. And uh, since that time, uh, the center has developed into um, uh, giving many more courses. Uh, they are giving, I think, uh, at least 15 plus uh, courses uh, as an amount. And um, for example, as you can see here to the, uh, to the right in the bottom, uh, there's one course called Sustainable Economic Futures, Nature, Equity and Community. Um, and another course that's called Critical Perspectives on Sustainable Development in, in Sweden. And what is really, um, uh, I think, quite original to this, these courses is that the, the center is still uh, to a high degree uh, influenced and run by students. So students are, are hired at the center to develop these courses together with professors and um, um, PhD students and uh, uh, other staff at CMS in course work groups. So they develop these courses together and the uh, students have an unusual amount of influence over these uh, courses. Um, apart from that, um, so ASP, you, you could say that ASP, uh, the ASP work at Uppsala University really has a foundation in this work. It grew out of this work. Um, but Uppsala also has a long history of uh, uh, student voice uh, work through unions and different student associations and so on. It's a very old university. It was founded in 1477. Uh, and uh, as I said in the beginning, uh, one fifth of the population of the city uh, are students. So it's really a student town, really um, vi vibrating of students, one could say. Um, so that is also important for the history of active student participation. I think that uh, there really has been a long history of uh, work through unions and associations and student voice work, basically. The ASP project uh, that grew out, of, grew out of this was funded by the, the vice chancellor of Uppsala University also. So that's important to, uh, to mention. How is then ASP defined at Uppsala University? So ASP is defined as, as students that support, empower and challenge each other's learning, as well as students as co-creators in the planning, implementation and evaluation of higher education. So uh, it's one could say that active student participation at Uppsala University is both seen as how students work together in peer-to-peer -peer learning activities but also how students are co-creators together with their peers, but also with uh, teachers uh, in developing uh, uh, courses at the, at the university through all the phases of course uh, planning. So it, it rests on two legs, one could say. Uh, this is another way of defining active student participation, uh, trying to visualize it a little bit. And um, one could say that ASP belongs to the broader field of student engagement, students being engaged in higher education in different ways. Uh, but then it uh, differs a bit from uh, what one could call activating learning methods, which is more about uh, different methods that uh, teachers have prepared 
for classes in order to uh, activate students uh, uh, during their courses. And student representation that is more about uh, perhaps student voice work. I'm not really sure how you define it in the Australian context, but in the Swedish context, student voice work would be more um, that students are um, um, giving feedback in different ways to uh, materials or to courses uh, after they have been um, after they have been given, uh, or so they are not really part of the re the, the process of, of creating them. They are not essential partners in the creation of the courses, but more um, uh, being represented in different um, um, in different um, uh, um, groups uh, at the university on different levels that then uh, work with uh, different questions regarding courses or complaints and so on. So it's more about a representative function, I would say, than um, uh, a creative or a co-creation function. Because this is what active student participation is, I would argue. Active student participation is more about the, the, the roles uh, the different roles that students uh, that we can imagine for students in higher education, uh, different roles that are possible for students in higher education. Is it only roles that are um, uh, um, roles that um, that are tied to um, taking in um, uh, taking in information? Um, digesting information that is given from from teachers and then do the examination and so on or is it um, is it also um, uh, possible to see whether students can uh, be included in, in in other aspects of higher education um, um, work that is done and then uh, in the work at Uppsala University on active student participation we found that um, it both has potential, but it's also already taking place within courses, within programs, um, in an interdisciplinary manner, also outside scheduled class time, so extracurricular activities, uh, and also in, in the planning, evaluation and examination of, of higher education. Um, so in the work on active student participation, it was both uh, mapped what activities that are um, uh, that are done at the moment, and also um, uh, and also it was imagined uh, what could be done uh, future-wise when it comes to this area. I realize that you will probably uh, see. <laughs> if I uh, took a little pause during the, the recording of the presentation, because there might be a slight difference in the angle of the camera or so on. Uh, but uh, uh, I'm sure you're fine with that. I just uh, needed to take a, a glass of water and, um, uh, and a little break. So uh, that is fine, of course. Uh, okay, so um, what I wanted to... Um, uh, to continue with is uh, a great quote by uh, Dan and Sandstra that have been uh, quite actively researching student engagement because they, uh, I know the quote is quite long, uh, but they really capture in this quote, I think, what uh, we at Uppsala University regard as active student participation work because they write that there's a subtle but extremely important difference between an institution that listens to students and responds accordingly and an institution that gives students the opportunity to explore areas that they believe to be significant to recommend solutions and to bring about the required changes there's a subtle but extremely important difference here they say and i think that not all institutions uh, uh, see that difference or record, regard that as an important difference uh, continuously then, the concept of listening to the student voice, implicitly if not deliberately, supports the perspective of students as consumer, whereas students as change agents explicitly supports a view of the student as active collaborator 
and co-producer with the potential of transformation. So I won't say anything more about this quote, but it really captures uh, uh, the very important difference that is that exists between uh, listening and taking in feedback from students through course evaluation or uh, such methods and to really actively uh, support students to to um, uh, uh, to um, active collabor actively collaborating with uh, the development of courses, for example. OK, so that was a little bit of a background to the active student participation work uh, at Uppsala University. Uh, the way we define it uh, a little bit on how the work was done. Uh, this could be uh, read about more extensively if one is interested in, uh, in it, in the active student participation companion. That is um, where um, the figures come from there uh, that I showed you earlier. And also it's listed in the references uh, at the end of the presentation. So colleagues of mine wrote that book and please have a look at it if you're, uh, if you're interested in this further. So now um, the idea is that um, I will try to um, discuss this, what I've been naming alliance building between um, practices and theories of education for sustainable development and democratic education and active student participation and um, how they can be benefiting from um, uh, joining forces to build more sustainable and democratic futures. So how this can potentially influence society uh, in these directions. This is uh, a topic that I've been thinking about quite a lot, but I haven't really put it into a presentation or into text earlier before this symposium. So bear with me. These are, these are just uh, um, uh, preliminary thoughts, and I'm really interested in uh, starting a conversation together with you on this topic. That is really important. Um, so this is me uh, thinking out loud. This would be a quote from, from, from me then, thinking out loud. Uh, with the active student participation approach, students develop competencies, knowledge, and learn new perspectives that are equally important for building sustainable democratic societies as they are for studying in a higher education context. So we see that there are great benefits uh, uh, working in this way for students uh, in their studies in higher education. Uh, they develop different skills that are important for being a student and studying. But these skills are also important, uh, I would argue, them for building democratic societies and sus more sustainable democratic societies. These skills many way go, in many ways go hand in hand and, uh, um, and are equally, equally important for uh, both of these strands of theories and practices. Hmm. Okay, so thus there's a great potential in stronger collaboration between the academic field and practice of democratic education and education for sustainable development with that of active student participation. Um, and this collaboration, I haven't really seen that much of in literature or in practices. It might exist, but it hasn't really been um, explicitly described or, uh, or researched that, that much. So that's why I'm interested. That's why I'm uh, particularly interested in, in this, I would say. OK, so why can these two um, strands then that are uh, that are existing at the moment in quite separate silos doing their own practices and work? Uh, what are the commonalities between them? Uh, yeah. So active student participation. Uh, research says it leads to more motivation among students. Uh, it promotes deep oriented learning. Uh, it promotes active learning and responsibility over studying. It uh, ties into uh, often, it's often used during pro problem solving and application of knowledge. 
So using these practices are uh, particularly um, good and uh, beneficial when you're working with these um, uh, with these types of um, uh, content in courses. Uh, it improves study skills such as critical thinking, information search, and argumentation. Um, and it improves interpersonal skills such as empathy and respect. And these are just some things that uh, research have found um, on uh, these types of practices and also uh, what practitioners and students have said that uh, uh, um, that this way of working has um, uh, has led to. <coughs> and um, if we looked at an uh, on some aspects of democratic education and ESD, um, there has been a lot of uh, discussion on what competences uh, do we do we want to see students develop in order to tackle sustainability issues. And here, um, um, uh, researchers have been defining competences such as a normative competence, interpersonal competence, strategic competence, anticipatory and system thinking. And I think that you can already uh, see for yourselves how this can connect to active student participation. Uh, already in 1916, uh, the quite famous theorist and uh, philosopher John Dewey that has been really influential um, when it comes to the field of democratic education. Um, he said that uh, student participation is really important in the classroom. Students uh, won't learn that much if they're not participating in different ways. We have to, um, uh, the teacher has to um, structure uh, 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 structure the content and structure the course uh, uh, more attached to the experiences of students, going into the experiences of students. Uh, so student participation uh, in uh, and outside the classroom uh, is really important. And uh, these two also connect to each other. What happens in the classroom has an effect on uh, uh, societal uh, life and democratic societal life. We also have um, uh, critical theory is quite an important um, uh, foundation uh, of uh, both democratic education, uh, but maybe um, um, most prominently uh, education for sustainable development. Uh, one uh, famous author to mention there, Paula Freire, as uh, probably many of you know of, um, wrote the pedagogy of the oppressed in the 1970s. Um, about challenging power, uh, inequalities, uh, increasing literacy, um, and he, he was also very much against the banking idea of education. And I would argue that active student participation practices have also grew, grown out of uh, a critique against the banking idea of education, transmissive based pedagogy, and so on. Um, some Swedish scholars of education for sustainable development uh, have discussed the democratic dimension of ESE, so environment and sustainability education. They have <coughs> combined these two. Um, and they argue that in that type of educational practices, students develop into well-informed members of society uh, actively participating in education and in society. So that is the whole idea with that type of education, the whole purpose, one could say. Then uh, educational scholar uh, Arjen Valls uh, discusses post-normal science as a concept, um, where uh, they argue that science uh, in the future and also education in the future has to be more about uh, managing of different societal problems rather than controlling different societal problems. That has been the uh, traditional way of approaching uh, problems. Let's try to control these problems in different ways. But he argues that all of these problems, many problems of today are really complex and especially uh, environmental and sustainability problems. So these has to be managed instead of uh, controlled. And this managing, it really requires participation and deliberation of uh, various sorts of people, and also in the classroom when you work with these type of issues. Um, 
And uh, lastly, another um, um, some other terms that is mentioned in the work by uh, Valls is the emancipatory approach to education versus the uh, uh, instrumental approach to education. So in the emancipatory approach to education, teachers are trying to strengthen in capacities <coughs> of students. Whereas in an instrumental approach, um, it's more about um, um, influencing uh, students in a predetermined way. There is an idea that this is what students uh, uh, should learn. So this is that, that is why we uh, structure education uh, the way we do. We predetermine um, what, what students should learn. For example, we decide that this is uh, the best sustainability behavior and we have to influence students' uh, uh, ways of thinking, norms, values and uh, um, help them learn the knowledges for the best uh, uh, best way of being sustainable, for example, or uh, contributing to a more sustainable society. Um, but he argues for the emancipatory approach uh, to education, which is more about strengthening different capacities, because sustainability problems are, uh, as we said earlier, uh, really complex. They are wicked. They are ever changing. Uh, we don't. Uh, what is the sustainability problem of today might not be a problem of uh, of tomorrow, or at least the problem has changed a lot. So we can't approach it in the same way. So if we then have a, a too much of an instrumental approach to to uh, to content and to education, this won't help students. We have to develop these more generic or uh, generic skills or capabilities that uh, that students can. Can, can use and apply on uh, all sorts of problems and where they are also prepared to, uh, to adapt because capacities you can use in, uh, on, on, on different problems um, and you also become more adaptable uh, through that type of, uh, through that type of um, education or when, you, um, when you're um, uh, educated in that way. So as we can see, um, there are a lot of commonalities between these different fields. But I think that uh, things that uh, we've learned through researching ASP, through practicing ASP, uh, could really be beneficial uh, for contributing to uh, solving big societal global problems of today. These are skills that are not only uh, super important being a student at university. Um, they are also important uh, um, in your life as a citizen, which you, a citizen, which you uh, live uh, simultaneously, of course, as you, as you are also studying or as you have the role of a student. You have these two roles simultaneously. And uh, I think we have to uh, more explicitly um, um, argue for uh, the benefit of these uh, um, these approaches, this approach, and, and this these skills uh, for being a competent uh, uh, contributor in society after education. However, it's not that uh, that easy because it can also be argued to be a bit. Uh, maybe steering students or be a bit uh, normative and not not everyone in in higher education uh, or in society as at large is interested in um, 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 in developing in letting students develop skills that can contribute to the solving of of these types of problems but I believe it's important <clears throat> so that is the stand that I take uh, and I, I look forward to hear what you what you think about this um, when we have the interactive finale. Okay, lastly then, I just want to touch upon some, some challenges that is connected to the work of active student participation and potentially also <clears throat> the work of building alliances between these fields that I've been talking about. Sorry for the, the coughing. Um, 
and I've already talked a little bit too much, so I will just briefly go through these challenges. And um, if you have any question about them, if you want me to clarify them or so on, um, you, can, you can contact me afterwards, or you could also add uh, questions to the Padlet that we will be using towards the end of this workshop. Uh, so, <clears throat> first, a challenge is the instrumentaliza in instrumentalization of higher education, that um, <clears throat> higher education is used as, uh, as something to lead towards something. Um, and it's, it's a specific, uh, you get a specific um, um, a title uh, after studying in higher education, for example. Um, and doing ASP work doesn't really fit with this uh, instrumentalization of, of higher education. Uh, it's quite time consuming to work in this way. I'm sure you've all uh, experienced uh, it already uh, in your own works. How does active student participation fit with the trends of quality measurements and quality assurance in higher education that are increasingly important aspects of uh, higher education uh, and they are also really uh, promoted? Uh, and a question related to that is maybe what is quality according to students? We also have, uh, as always, when uh, people work uh, together, uh, we have the um, um, the issue or the fact that there's power present. So how is power distributed uh, in in these different uh, uh, active student participation settings? Uh, which roles are different people giving given? Uh, how do teachers relate to to uh, potential new roles that they will be? Uh, approaching or uh, given when working like this? Uh, and how uh, does the institutionalized culture, how can we uh, reshape that culture? Uh, is it possible to do it even? We also have uh, the aspect of engagement from the student side. Are students, uh, the larger student group, really interested in, in working in this way? Is this what they want from their education? Do they want to be this active uh, uh, responsibility taking responsibility, um, um, or uh, what do they want from their education? What is their goal and purpose with education? There's also the risk that <clears throat> um, universities, uh, teachers, uh, higher education is blindly adapting and changing after student critique because of financial reasons and expectations on throughput that is increasingly um, put on universities from uh, the governmental side. And um, that is a challenge. And uh, related to the question of power, of course, who participate and is engaged in these activities and how can uh, these activities be uh, broadened so they appeal to the larger student group and not only the good students <laughs> that some authors have argued that they, uh, that they do currently. Okay, so I will just introduce uh, this interactive finale uh, for you, and then you will go on doing it uh, together yourselves. Um, so first, we have a discussion, debate, dialogue. It depends on how you approach it. Five to eight minutes. The idea is you, that you discuss in groups, how can active student participation contribute to the development of sustainable democratic societies, or should it even? Add it to Padlet um, to start this important conversation. And the second thing that you do together then is that you're trying out a real active student participation exercise called the missing perspective. You do this for uh, five minutes or uh, as much time as you, as you have. And here you reflect individually. What was missing? What was the missing perspective in this key workshop? that wasn't touched upon. Think of theories, challenges, perspectives, but also maybe the delivery of, of this workshop. Uh, I realized that it's really hard to, to make a workshop uh, as a recorded presentation uh, or as, as a record in a recorded format. So uh, 
I'd really like to have your input on that, how one can make it better, because I realize now that this isn't really that workshoppy, uh, maybe. So how can one do workshops, recorded workshops in a good way? Add it to Padlet and Lovisa will happily hear about it for continuous improvement of her workshop skills. Okay, thank you very much for listening and participating in this. Uh, and I uh, hope you have a nice rest of the symposium and um, see you on Padlet tomorrow morning, maybe, or I will be there at least uh, answering and um, reading some of your um, thoughts and comments. Thank you very much and have a great rest of the day.